Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, and we're going through the book of Je or Exodus, verse by verse, and we come today to Exodus chapter 16 as we continue to study the travels of the Israelites from Egypt to the Promised Land. And really, they, they're just getting started. But they're in the wilderness, <clears throat> And we'll look at verse 1 of chapter 16 in just a minute, the scripture verse by verse. Website is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. Don't forget, you have a hunger for God's word, go satisfy it right there, because you can go through the whole Bible, four series, verse by verse, that's right, verse by verse, in-depth Bible college study at the thebibleversebyverse.com. In fact, you will get much more Bible there because that's all that's there, the whole counsel of God, than you will at the vast majority of so-called Bible colleges today. No psychology, no psychobabble, no current events, no mathematics, no whatever. Just the Word of God, verse by verse. It'll prepare you to serve Jesus. The Bible says that when Peter and John were arrested in the book of Acts, the officers who arrested them, the Jews, took note that they were not educated men, but they had spent a lot of time with Jesus, and that's what made them effective. And what will make you effective as a Christian is spending a lot of time with Almighty God in the Word of, in the Word of God. So, with that, Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your Word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Exodus 16, verse 1. And they took their journey from Elam... And all the congregation of the children of Israel came unto the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. So once again, we are going to see that there's going to be trouble. Trouble for the Israelites, and it's going to become an issue because they lack faith. They are not trusting in God who had already proved that he would take care of them and fight for them and supply all of their needs. Israel has been out of Egypt for one month, and there have been some ups and downs during this first month. And now they are entering into the wilderness, which means that they are heading into another difficult situation. Let's look. Verse 2. <clears throat> and the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. As soon as things got tough, as soon as they got a little rough, the Israelites started to grumble and complain. The Israelites should have been praying and not complaining. They should have been praying to God. They should have been telling them, telling God about the things that concern them. And after praying, they should have put their trust in him. Instead, they started to grumble and complain, which was standard procedures for, for this guy, for these guys. <clears throat> Verse 3, and the children of Israel said unto them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots, and when we, <clears throat> when we did eat bread to the full. For ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill us, this whole assembly, with hunger. Every time the Israelites run into a difficult situation, they accuse Moses of pre-planning it with a view toward killing them. <clears throat> Moses shows extreme patience with these people. Four, 
Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain amount every day, that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. Instead of God saying, I've had it with their complaining, I've had it with their accusations against you, Moses, which he certainly would have been justified in doing. But instead of that, he hears their cries and their grumbling over the fact that they didn't have any food. So God tells Moses, I'm going to supply food. I'm going to give them what they need. And I will give them their food daily, one day at a time. Five, and it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. The people were to gather the same amount of food every single day as God provided it every morning, except on the sixth day, because on that day, there were, they were to gather twice as much food because the people were not to do any work on the seventh. So the command is clear. Notice six. And Moses and Aaron said unto all the children of Israel, At evening then ye shall know that the Lord hath brought you out from the land of Egypt. And in the morning, then, ye shall see the glory of the Lord, because he heareth your murmurings against the Lord. And what are we that ye murmur against us? Moses and Aaron are just servants of God. So when the Israelites complained, then it was not directed at them. But it was directed at God. And that's something for us to keep in mind, by the way. Keep in mind that all complaining is a direct hit at God. You may think you're complaining about the circumstances and not about God, but that's not how God sees it. All complaining is a direct hit at God and at his sovereignty. Verse 8, And Moses said, This shall be, when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat and in the morning bread to the full. For the Lord heareth your murmurings, which ye murmur against him. And what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord. Again, the Israelites were complaining about Moses and their circumstances because they think that Moses is to blame. They didn't realize that they were complaining against God. And the Bible says that God is working all things after the counsel of his own will, which means that all complaining about all circumstances is complaining against God and his wisdom. Every time we complain about something, we are saying, God, we, we don't trust you. We're either saying, God, we don't trust you, or God, you don't know what you're doing. Nine. And Moses spoke unto Aaron, say unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, come near before the Lord, for he hath heard your murmurings. In other words, Moses says, Israel, you're complaining against God, and God has heard your complaints. And now God is about to pay you a visit. Having heard this, the Israelites should be afraid. And notice verse 10. And it came to pass, as Aaron spoke unto the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. Here comes God. So, just as Aaron was speaking to the Israelites, they see the glory of God coming to pay them a visit, just as Aaron's promised would happen. 11. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. Speak unto them, saying, At evening ye shall eat flesh, and in the morning ye shall be filled with bread, and ye shall know 
that I am the Lord your God. The Israelites should have learned that God was their God back in Egypt or when God parted the Red Sea. How do you have any doubts about the presence of God, the provision of God, and the fact that God is God and that God is on your side after all the things that he did in Egypt and parting the Red Sea for heaven's sakes and destroying the Egyptian army? They believed that he was their God then, But as soon as things started to get a little tough, they would forget that God was their God, which would lead them, of course, to panic. Verse 13, And it came to pass that at evening the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lay round about the host. And when the dew that lay was gone up, behold, Upon the face of the wilderness, there lay a small round thing, as small as the hoar frost on the ground. God sent them meat at night to eat. And the small round thing is what God calls manna. God would place a layer of dew on the ground and then the manna on top of that dew, and then more dew on top of that manna. And this was God's way of keeping the manna clean for his people. See how he does things? He has everything figured out, doesn't he? 15. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna, for they knew not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. The Israelites ask, what is this? Moses tells them that it is food directly from God. 16, this is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. Gather of it every man according to his eating, an omer for every man according to the number of your persons. Take ye every man for those who are in his tents. Moses says, take enough manna for each person for that for that for that day and just for that day every day god will give you it every day take enough manna for each person in your household for that day but only take what you need don't go beyond 17 and the children of israel did so and gathered some more, some less. And when they did measure it with an omer, he that gathered much had nothing over, and he that gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. Everyone was satisfied because they followed the directions that God gave them. They followed the word of God, so everything was fine, everything was smooth, everything was working out. Following God's commandments, following his word is the key to being satisfied and having joy. And it's walking in obedience to God and obeying his holy word. That's the key. 19. And Moses said, let no man leave of it till the morning. In other words, there'd be no leftovers. And this was a direct command from God. No leftovers. God will give you what you need tomorrow. You don't have to save the leftovers. In fact, it was a command not to save the leftovers. Don't save it. Eat what you have. 20. Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto Moses, but some of them left of it until the morning. And it bred worms and became odious, and Moses was angry with them. The Israelites had never heard a commandment from God which they did not want to break. And here, again, they disobeyed God's order because they tried to save some of the manna. I suppose they tried to store it up. Maybe we won't have to go looking for it tomorrow if we store it up for a few days. Who knows? Or maybe we can eat twice as much. Who knows? The important thing is they disobeyed God. And it rotted, and it smelled terrible, 
And because of this, Moses was angry with them because they disobeyed a clear, simple commandment of God. 21. And they gathered it every morning, every man according to his eating. And when the sun became hot, it melted. God gave them food, but notice that they had to gather it. God provided, but they had to labor. When they had, when they had each gathered enough, then the rest of the manna would disappear until new manna appeared the next morning. 22, and it came to pass that on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for one man, and all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. On the sixth day, each man, according to the word of God, each man was to get for themselves a double portion. The rulers of the congregation thought the people were disobeying God again by gathering too much. So they went and told Moses about it. But they were the ones who didn't understand the commandment of God. In verse 23 says, And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord hath said, Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which ye will bake today, and boil that which ye will boil and that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. Now, this only applied on the Sabbath. These rulers, remember, they were excited and jumping to the conclusion that the Israelites were disobeying God again because they gathered twice as much on the sixth day when, in fact, they were following God's word. We as Christians need to check out the facts and judge them, compare them to Scripture before we judge someone or condemn someone. 24, and they laid it up till the morning as Moses bade, and it did not become odious, neither was there any worm in it. We see here that God doubled the shelf life of the manna that they gathered on the sixth day. On the sixth day, by God's command, it had to last for two days. So it truly was a miracle food from God, a miracle food from a miracle God. The same manna that would rot after one day lasted two days when it was gathered on the day before the Sabbath. 24, actually 25. And Moses said, eat that today, for today is a Sabbath unto the Lord. Today ye shall not find it in the field. So by obeying God, they had something to eat on the Sabbath day because Moses had told them that there would be no manna in the fields on the seventh day. So it was crucial that they obeyed God for their own sake, as well as just out of pure obedience to him. 26. Six days ye shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in it there shall be none. In other words, Moses tells them, don't even bother going out and looking for the manna on the Sabbath day, because God said, gather twice as much on Friday. He's not sending any on Saturday, because you're supposed to take a day off. 27, and it came to pass that there went out some of the people on the seventh day to gather it, and they found none. Some of the Israelites did not listen to Moses, and they did not gather twice as much of the manna on Friday for themselves. So now on Saturday, they didn't have anything to eat. They're out there looking for it. In spite of what God said, you're not going to find any. I'm not sending any. Well, stubbornly, just going to do things their own way. Well, they came up empty, which is always the case when we decide that we're going to do something our own way rather than God's way. It's going to fail, and we're going to be miserable, and there's going to be suffering, and there's going to be frustration. 28, and the Lord said unto Moses, how long refuse ye to keep my commandments and my laws? 
God was making his words simple to understand. And God asks, why is it that you people are not following it? And don't you understand that I'm trying to do what is best for you? 29. See, the Lord hath given you the Sabbath. Therefore, he giveth you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Abide every man in his place. Let no man go out on the Sabbath day. Again, Moses says, God will give you twice as much manna on the sixth day. So double the amount that you would normally gather. And on the seventh day, do not go out looking for it and don't do any work. 30. So the people rested on the seventh day and the house of Israel called the name thereof manna. And it was like currender seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. They did rest on the Sabbath day. And whatever manna was, it was clear that the Israelites had never seen it before. Manna was created by God to meet the special needs of his people during the time in the wilderness. God created it because the Israelites could not grow their own food and there were no stores and they were on the move. So God met their needs in a way that would work for them at this particular time. 32, and Moses said, this is the thing which the Lord commandeth, fill an omer of it to be kept for your generations, that they may see the bread wherewith I have fed you in the wilderness when I brought you forth from the land of Egypt. God wants them to pick some of the manna up and set it aside as a memorial. And what is amazing is that this manna that they will set aside, you know, the shelf life on that is going to be centuries. So the normal shelf life of manna was one day. The day before the Sabbath, the stuff that they picked was would last for two days. And this symbolic manna that was to be on display in the ark lasted for centuries. <laughs> you can't see the hand of God in this, and you are hopelessly spiritually blind. 33, and Moses said unto Aaron, Take a pot and put an omer full of manna therein and lay it up before the Lord to be kept for your generations. As the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron laid it up before the testimony to be kept. And the children of Israel did eat manna forty years until they came to a land inhabited. They did eat manna until they came unto the borders of the land of Canaan. Now an omer is a tenth part of an ephah. Aaron did as God had instructed Moses to do with the manna. They ate manna for forty years. And they received manna from God until they no longer needed it. When they arrived at the promised land, then the manna stopped because they were now able to harvest crops from the land. And we see from this that God supplies our needs in different ways at different times in our lives. Changing circumstances do not hinder God from supplying what we need. He is the source. So don't trust in people. Don't trust in institutions. Don't trust in government. Don't trust in wealth. Don't trust in your job. Don't trust in anyone or anything other than Almighty God because circumstances change at different times in our life and God will supply our needs in different ways. But if we belong to him and we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, everything else we need will be added unto us. Maybe not in the same way, maybe not from the same worldly source, but somehow, some way, God will provide for as long as he wants us to live. So I'm going to stop right there for today. We'll pick it up in chapter 17. Next time, more adventure in the wilderness with God, Moses, 
and the rest of the Israelites. I mentioned earlier you can study the whole Bible with me at thebibleversebyverse.com. Study at your pace, at your convenience. All you need to bring is your Bible to thebibleversebyverse.com. And if you would like to be a part of this ministry, pray for me. Pray for God's Word. Click the Donate button at the top of the front page at thebibleversebyverse.com and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. And until next time, this is Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long, everyone.